This is chapter three, matter and energy, and in these slides we're going to be learning about temperature. Everybody has a pretty good idea of what temperature is. It's a measure of how hot or cold an object is, and technically this temperature needs to be in comparison to another object. We use thermometers to measure temperature in our everyday lives. We all have experience with uh, measuring our own temperatures with thermometers or maybe cooking thermometers and things like that. There are several different temperature scales. Again, most of us are aware of at least the Fahrenheit and the Celsius scales. In the United States, we use Fahrenheit to talk about uh, most temperatures, including like the temperature of the, the weather outside. In the rest of the world, they use Celsius to talk about the same sorts of things. In science, we use Celsius or a related system called Kelvin, which we'll learn about in a moment. All of these scales are defined in terms of the physical properties of certain substances. So for example, on the Celsius scale, the zero degree mark on the Celsius scale is defined by the temperature at which water freezes, pure water freezes. And the temperature at which pure water boils is defined as 100 degrees in the Celsius scale. These temperatures on the Fahrenheit scale are different. Pure water freezes at 32 degrees and boils at 212 degrees. That's because when the Fahrenheit scale was originally created, it was based on uh, different physical properties. It was uh, actually some sort of salt water mixture that determined the freezing point. So the, the zero degree point on the Fahrenheit scale corresponds to the freezing temperature of that salt water mixture. And then the 100 degree point on the Fahrenheit scale was the at the time the current estimate for human body temperature now it's been refined a little bit and so on the fahrenheit scale you may know that human body temperature the average healthy body temperature is 98.6 degrees so it's close to 100 but not exact the kelvin temperature scale is derived from the celsius scale but it's based on an understanding of what heat is and we learned in previous slides that heat is really just the motion of particles on an atomic or molecular scale. So if you're looking at an object and the particles within the object are moving, it has some heat. If they're moving faster, it has more heat. If they're moving slower, it has less heat. So if you take an object and you begin to remove heat from it, the particles inside slow down. They start to vibrate slower and slower and they get less and less movement. And so eventually, if you continue this process, the particles will stop moving completely, right? This is at least theoretically possible. Uh, so the particles will completely stop moving and they'll have lost all of their energy and all of their heat. And at that point, you'll be at the lowest possible temperature. Okay, this is what's called absolute zero. And so if you extrapolate this backwards in the Celsius scale, you'll find that the expectation or the prediction theoretically is that all of the particle motion will stop at negative 273 degrees. Really it's negative 273.15. There's probably more decimals than that, but for our purposes, we're gonna round it to an even negative 273 degrees, excuse me. So absolute zero in the Celsius scale is negative 273 degrees. The Kelvin scale, recognizing that, redefined the zero point of Celsius so that zero is the, the absolute zero temperature, right? It's the lowest possible temperature. So the Kelvin temperatures are 273 degrees higher than the Celsius temperatures. The Kelvin scale has units called Kelvins, and unlike Fahrenheit and Celsius, they are not written with the degree symbol. They're not considered degree units. They are Kelvin units. And because zero is defined as the absolute zero, the point at which all molecular motion stops, you can't have less than no motion, and so there's no negative temperatures possible on the Kelvin scale. For Celsius and Fahrenheit, negative temperatures are possible and frequently occur. Anything colder than a piece of frozen water is a negative on the Celsius scale. Okay, because the Kelvin scale is derived from the Celsius scale, one Kelvin is equal to one degree Celsius. So in that sense, they are similar. The units are the same size. They just have different freezing points, different zero points. Here we can see three different thermometers uh, calibrated to these three different scales, but they're all in beakers of boiling water. So all of these thermometers are representing the physical reality of a temperature of boiling water. 
And so you can see that the, the red alcohol in these thermometers is all up to this point. Okay, here, here, and here. They're identical in that sense, and so they're all rising to the same level. The difference is in how we mark the thermometers, how we scale these uh, thermometers. And so in the Celsius scale, since this is the boiling point of water, this is 100 degrees Celsius. Okay? If we lowered this to the freezing point of water, we would get zero degrees Celsius down here. Human body temperature is 30 degrees, 37 degrees Celsius, excuse me. So between the freezing point and the boiling point of water in the Celsius scale, you have 100 degrees separating them. And that's why Celsius is also sometimes called centigrade. Centi means 100, grade means you know divisions or gradations. So centigrade means a, a temperature scale that's divided into 100 units. Fahrenheit has the uh, sort of strange numbers of 32 degrees for the freezing point of water, right, corresponding to zero degrees in the Celsius scale, and 212 corresponding to 100 degrees. So again, we talked about how those numbers were come up with. This is sort of a strange scale in the sense that these are not very round numbers, so they're a little bit harder to work with. But unfortunately, this is what we deal with in America, dealing with uh, these temperature units, Fahrenheit. Kelvin, as I said, has the same units as Celsius, so there's still 100 degrees between, or 100 kelvins, I should say, between the freezing point of water and the boiling point of water. But because the zero point has been shifted down to the, the negative 273 degrees, now zero degrees Celsius corresponds to 273 degrees Kelvin. And 100 degrees above that, the boiling point is 373 degrees Kelvin. So these are some simple questions about these scales. What is the temperature at which water freezes? Well, we have three different choices here. They're all zero degrees. So which scale defines the freezing point of pure water as zero degrees Celsius? And the answer is obviously Celsius. So choice two is the correct answer. B says, what is the temperature at which water boils? The options are 100 degrees Fahrenheit, 32 degrees Fahrenheit, or 373 degrees Kelvin. Now you may remember I said 100 degrees Fahrenheit was originally uh, assumed or considered to be the human body temperature when Fahrenheit was developed, so obviously that's not the temperature of boiling water. 32 degrees Fahrenheit is the freezing point of water in the Fahrenheit scale, so that's not the temperature of boiling water. 373 Kelvin is 100 degrees above 273. And so 273 is the freezing point of water in Kelvin, and so 100 degrees above that is the boiling point. So this is our answer. Choice three is our answer, 373K. And then the last question C is, how many Celsius units are between the boiling and freezing points of water? And as I said, if your freezing point is at zero and your boiling point is at 100, then Celsius, also known as centigrade because of the 100 divisions, has 100 degrees between the two, so choice one. To convert between Celsius and Kelvin is very simple because Kelvin is based on Celsius. So really the only thing you have to do is shift the zero point. Okay? They have the same size degree units. A Kelvin is equal to a degree Celsius, but they have different zero points. So in order to shift the zero point, you just take the Celsius temperature and you add 273 degrees, or 273 Kelvin again. So if your Celsius temperature is zero degrees, the freezing point, then zero plus 273 is just 273, and that's the freezing point of water in Kelvin. Remember, there are no negative Kelvin temperatures. Converting between Celsius and Fahrenheit, on the other hand, is a little bit more complicated, because in addition to having a different zero point, they have different degrees, okay? So there are 100 degrees in the Celsius scale between the freezing point and the boiling points of pure water. But in the Fahrenheit scale, you're going from 32 degrees with the freezing point to 212 at the boiling point. So that's a difference of 180 degrees Celsius. So again, in addition to there being different freezing points or different zero points, you also have different degree sizes where 180 degrees in the Fahrenheit system equals 100 degrees in the Celsius system. And so if you look at that ratio, you can come up with 180 Fahrenheit degrees for every 100 Celsius degrees, and that can be reduced down to 1.8 
divided by 1. In addition to adjusting for the degree sizes by multiplying this factor, 1.8 times the temperature, you also need to account for the uh, difference in zero points. So if you have a temperature of zero degrees Celsius, that is the freezing point of water. 1.8 times zero equals zero. But the freezing point in Fahrenheit is not zero, it's 32. So you need to add 32 degrees here in order to adjust the freezing point. Okay, so there's two factors. So it's not just a simple conversion where you multiply the Fahrenheit temperature by something to get the Celsius temperature. You need to multiply it and shift it by adding. So this is a formula that you should remember. You will need to convert between temperature, uh, temperatures in Fahrenheit and temperatures in Celsius. Okay. Uh, this is a formula you would use if you have the Celsius temperature and you want to obtain the Fahrenheit temperature. If you have the Fahrenheit temperature and you want to obtain the Celsius temperature, you just need to invert this formula, like so, right? So you subtract 32 from both sides to get rid of it. That gives you t the Fahrenheit temperature minus 32. And then you divide both sides by 1.8 to get rid of that factor. And so you end up with the Celsius temperature equals the Fahrenheit temperature minus 32 divided by 1.8. Now you could look at this as a separate equation to remember if you're given the Fahrenheit temperature, you can plug it in here to get the Celsius temperature. But again, this is simple algebra to go from the initial equation to the final equation. So it's a much better idea to just memorize this first equation and then make sure that you practice your algebra and you're good enough at the algebraic manipulations to go from one to the other. Okay? It should be trivial for you to put in either the Fahrenheit temperature or the Celsius temperature to this equation at the top and then obtain the other one. Here's an example of a temperature conversion problem. Another very straightforward question. A person with a hypothermia has a body temperature of 34.8 degrees Celsius. What is the temperature in degrees Fahrenheit? So 34.8 degrees Celsius is a very uh, low temperature. It's well below the average human body temperature of 37 degrees Celsius. And so before we even begin, we should think about these numbers and predict sort of where we are, right? If, if this is below the normal body temperature, and I know that in Fahrenheit, the normal body temperature is 98.6, then hopefully at the end of this, when I do my math correctly, I should get an answer that's less than 98.6. And that's a, a test that I can do at the end to see if I am in the right ballpark. So step by step, we start from our given value, 34.8 degrees Celsius. That's given right in the, the uh, question statement. And we need the temperature in Fahrenheit. So we have to look at the temperature equation. Again, this is an example where you can't quite look at this as just a simple conversion. You really need to know the formula. Okay? So step two is write the temperature equation formula. Fahrenheit temperature equals 1.8 times the te Celsius temperature plus 32. And then it's just a matter of substituting in the values. TC is the Celsius temperature, that's 34.8 from the question. And then you just solve. 1.8 times 34.8 gives you 62.6, plus 32 gives you a temperature of 94.6 degrees. And again, this is less than the healthy human body temperature of 98.6 degrees Fahrenheit. So we know that it is a reasonable answer, right? That doesn't tell us for sure it's the correct answer, but it means we're at least in the right, right range. There's nothing crazy about it. Okay? And then the last thing to remember here is that because this 1.8 number comes from the ratio between the discrete number of degrees and the Fahrenheit and Celsius scales, this is actually an exact number. Even though it looks like a decimal, it's exact. It's 180 divided by 100, and both of those are exact numbers, and so this number is exact. Same thing with the 32. The 32 comes from the definition of the Fahrenheit scale, and so that's considered an exact number as well. So what that means is that none of, neither of those numbers is gonna affect our significant figures. So if our temperature is initially given to three significant figures, then it should have three significant figures at the end as well. Here's another example. On a cold winter day, the temperature is minus 15 degrees Fahrenheit. What is that temperature in degrees Celsius? Step one, we this time are given the Fahrenheit temperature here, negative 15 degrees Fahrenheit, and we're asked to find the Celsius temperature. And so again, we need the temperature equation. 
you can start with the same temperature equation we used last time, right? So you can start with uh, Tf equals 1.8 Tc plus 32, and you can put in this negative 15. Now, since this is a Fahrenheit temperature, this is going to go into this side of the equation, and then you would have to rearrange to find Tc. So these steps are just assuming you've already done that rearrangement or you've already memorized the alternate equation and starting from here. But either way is fine, right? Again, once you have the equation, it's just a matter of putting your uh, values in. They give you the Fahrenheit temperature, negative 15. Make sure you include the negative sign, negative 15. Minus 32 gives you minus 47 divided by 1.8 is negative 26 degrees Celsius. So the answer is D. This is a question that involves converting Celsius to Kelvin, which again is an easier conversion. What is the normal body temperature 37 degrees in Kelvin? Okay. Well, we're given our temperature in Celsius, we're asked to find it in Kelvin. So what is the temperature equation relating Celsius to Kelvin? It's very simple. You take the Celsius temperature and you add 273. You don't need to multiply it by anything. So 37 plus 273 gives you an answer of 310 Kelvin B.